for Project 11, it may be hard to see, but I disconnected the two snap wire in between the slide switch and the disco motor and connected the jumper wire. Now I'm going to turn it on and let's see what happens now. You will see that the LEDs on the disco motor light up, but the motor itself does not spin. And look at that awesome pattern on the ceiling. You could kind of compare it with the stars in the sky. Red, green, and blue stars. Green is my favorite color, by the way. Alternatively, you could change the disco cover. And now you have much larger dots that are scattered unevenly across the ceiling. Project 12 is reverse disco ball and you will see that the motor is mounted in the reverse position. It is now mounted upright instead of downward on the circuit board. Here we go. Now, you may not notice, but the disco motor spins in the opposite direction, unlike in Project 10. Now you get to see the pattern from the bigger spots when the motor is spinning. I didn't show you that earlier. Now I am going to do project 14, which is called just the ball. I actually covered project 13 because I did the additional pattern besides the first one by switching the disco tops. But project 14 is just the ball, and you can use either projects 10, 12, or 13, but take away the blue jumper wires and watch what happens. The disco motor itself spins, but none of the lights come on because the power supply for the LEDs is cut off. And this is perfect to do in a brighter room because you don't need the light. Project 15 is the programmable light fan. This project will cover how to operate and program messages into the fan, which is the M8 component. In a few of the previous projects, I showed, I included the fan, but I did, did not show you how to input or edit messages. So I will do that in this project. Here they show you the different controls for normal mode and program mode. I am going to get to them once I explain briefly about operation. Turning on the slide switch turns the fan on, and these are the default messages which have since been erased by deleting or inputting my own messages. Turn on the slide switch and the motor will spin. To cycle through the messages, we will hit the C button. Now there is my name as the second one, hello with a parenthesis in front, but the other slots are blank. That's the first message, second message, third message, but the other three slots are empty. So I will show you how to input a message. Hold down the S2 switch, the press switch, and now a light will blink, indicating a character. You can use the A and C buttons to scroll through the letters, either forward with the A button or backward with the C button. Besides letters, there are also numbers as well as other symbols like a heart, a star, and punctuation marks like 
a period question mark and exclamation point. The black square means space. In order to make a space between words or characters, you would hit the S2 button. And then you can put in what you want. I'm just going... You can hold down the A or C buttons to scroll through the characters more quickly. Each uh, phrase can contain up to 15 letters or characters. Now once you are done, you would hold down S2 to save your message. And now it will be displayed permanently until you erase it. Now the B button does not do anything in this project. The message can also fade out and reappear, which it should do in a little bit. So I think it just switched to one of the blank spaces. But after several con hours of continuous use, the fan message may be erratic or may not pop up at all. To solve this problem, turn off the fan for five minutes and it should be back to normal. Project 16 is known as the busy circuit. This circuit has almost all the components included in this set. The only ones that are not in it are the seven segment, the, the double seven segment display and the S8 module along with one jumper wire, but I am going to turn on the slide switch and let's see what happens. The, an alarm sounds, all three main LEDs light up, the disco motor spins, now note that the uh, shaft for the disco cover is broken so I couldn't put it on, but all three lights on the motor are very bright. The programmable fan also spins and it's displaying my favorite message, my name. Now let's see what happens when I press the S2 switch. Be careful with the fan. This will allow me to switch through the messages. That's the most recent one I entered, which is really just a letter and two numbers. And this is called the busy circuit because it, there is a lot going on. Project 17 is game selector. This circuit will demonstrate how to select games using the U29 module. There are 21 games available. However, most cannot be played using this single simple circuit or their features will be limited. Turn on the slide switch and you'll use the buttons on the S8 module to select and play your games. The A button will change the right hand digit while the C button will change the left hand digit. The B button will be used to select a particular game. There are up to 21 games that you can play even though the number will, the numbers will go higher. If you go higher the display and hit the B button, the display will reset to zero. The following, the following several projects will show you the different games that you can play with this kit. Project 18 is Lucky Doubles. For Lucky Doubles, we would select game four by pressing the A button four times and then hitting the B button. It'll say go. What we will do is hold down the C button for a few seconds and release it. This is like rolling a dice game. If we roll doubles like I just did, a winning song will be played and the game will reset itself. But if you don't roll doubles, you can just hit the C button again. Or if you're having multiple people playing, you can just take turns and the next person will play. You can keep count. You can have multiple people play 
and see who can get the most doubles in, let's say, 10 or 20 tries to make it more fun. Project 19, lucky sixes, unlucky ones, can either use the previous circuit or this one, which will be louder. We will select game five, and the instructions to play are listed. Once go appears on the display, you will hold the C button down for a period of time and release it. Now, if we roll double sixes, a winning song will be played as if you rolled two. But if you roll double ones, a losing song will be played. And you could say that they lost. You can have multiple people play this, and you can see who is the first to roll two sixes. And then anyone who rolls an 11 before they roll two sixes will be eliminated from the game. I'm going to wait until I get two sixes. There should be a fixed time limit for rolling. Like you have to hold the bind down for at least five, for five seconds, no more, no less. There we go. Project 20 is risk and reward. We can use the same project, but we're going to select game six and hit the B button. Now, we'll hold down the C button and release it. If you roll one in either digit, like I just did, a losing song will be played. And you'll get zero point, and I'll get zero points for that turn, in addition to losing all points from previous rolls. However, if you don't roll a one in either of the digits, then the sum of the digits that you scored, for instance, five and three, will be added to the previous score. So I would have gone eight additional points, and they will be added to my previous rolls. And then I can decide whether to accept the points by pressing A or try to take a risk and gain more points. Once again, if I get a one in either of those digits, I will lose and I'll be out of the game. When a player decides to hit the A button after multiple rolls, a winning song will be played and the sum of their previous roles will be shown quickly. To make it more fun, see how few turns you need to get 50 points. You could possibly get 50 in one turn. You can have also multiple people play and write down your scores after each turn and see who is the first one to get 100.